Hello students and welcome back to this video lecture series on chapter breaks. In previous videos we have seen what is the definition of breaks, function of breaks, material of brake lining, types of breaks, then the mechanical breaks we have focused on, then first type of mechanical brake we have seen that is block or shoe brake. Then we have seen the three cases for that block and shoe brake, block or shoe brake, and we have found the braking torque for each. Then we have seen what is self-locking concept then self energizing concept of then we have seen the pure type of block break then we have seen double block break then second type we have seen that is a band break in that we have seen simple band break and differential band break so after these two types of mechanical breaks third type we are going to see now in this today's lecture that is a band and block break band and block break is a combination of band break and block break in band and block break, different n number of blocks of wood, rubber or any other material are lined up along the band and the friction between the blocks and drum provides a breaking action. In this animation also you can observe n number of blocks are attached to the band and when you apply some force on the lever then these bands are sorry then these blocks are making contact with the rotating drum and making it to stop. In left hand diagram also you can observe as a differential kind of uh, band break where a OA distance and OB distance where the band is attached are different. OA distance is larger than OB distance that's why it will create a tight slide and slack side that is tight slide in tension T1 and slack side with the tension T2 it will create when you apply force P on the lever. So in that same differential band break, we have applied the n number of blocks inside the band. So the effect of this is that the larger surface area of different kind of material of blocks will be applied on the brake and brake can be stopped very easily. So it may be observed in that left hand diagram when the drum rotates in anticlockwise direction as shown in left hand diagram, the end of the band attached to the A will be tight with the tension T1 and the end of the band attached to point B will be slack in tension T2 whereas in the other hand if it, it we will consider that drum is rotating in clockwise direction the ends of the band attached to point A will be slack with the tension T2 and end attached to the point B will be tight in the with the tension T2 this will occur this we have already seen in the differential band breaks so here also same differential band break is used but the n number of blocks are attached to it. So next we will find out for this same uh, band break. For this band break we will find out what is the breaking torque required to stop the drum. So that breaking torque Tb can be given as a T1 minus T2 into Re that we have already seen in the band type of break same formula we have got Tb is equal to T1 minus T2 into Re whereas Re is the effective radius and that can be found by R plus T by 2 what is T by 2? T is the thickness of that band and R is the radius of the drum or wheel so R plus T by 2 you are getting Te sorry Re and uh, into T1 minus T2 that is tension side tension side sorry tight slide tension minus slack side tension you have got as a tv now here we will see some nomenclature in this diagram that is let us consider that t1 is a tension in the tight slide t2 is the tension in the slack side mu is a coefficient of friction between the block and drum and it is generally in between one zero to one t1 dash is the tension in the band between the first and second block so here n number of block we have assumed starting from left end 1 2 3 to the right end n minus 1 to n these n blocks we have assumed so t1 be the tension on the left hand side that is band attached to a point t1 will be tension and next to that on same first block t1 dash will be the tension on the side of sorry on the other side towards the second block so t2 and T2 dash and T3 dash will be tension in the bands between the second and third block between the third and fourth block respectively. Similarly it will be up to nth block and Re is the effective radius of the wheel and it can be given as R plus 
t by 2. So consider a single first block over which some forces are acting. So and in that the first block theta plus theta that is 2 theta will be the included angle and under equilibrium condition the various forces are acting on that first block these forces are the tension in the tight side that is T1 and tension in the slack side or tension in the band between the first and second block that is T1 dash third force is the normal reaction force of the drum on the block that is Rn in upward direction and the force of the friction move into Rn in exactly opposite direction of the T1 dash. So these are the four forces acting on the first block that we have assumed and now let us resolve these forces T1 and T2. These tensions T1 and sorry T1 and T1 dash we will resolve horizontally and vertically because this T1 and T2 we are observing exactly horizontal but these are not exactly horizontal these are making some small angle theta with respect to horizontal therefore the two components for the t1 tension will be t1 cos theta along the horizontal or exactly tangential to the wheel and t1 sin theta will be the component of that t1 exactly radial to that wheel similarly for t1 dash t1 dash cos theta and uh, T1 dash sin theta will be the vertical component. So resolving the forces radially that is uh, vertically we will get the T1 sin theta plus T sorry T1 sin theta plus T1 dash sin theta is equal to Rn because Rn is in upward direction upward direction forces we will assume as a positive and here downward direction forces we will assume as a, a negative if you are assumed like that and rearrange the terms we will get the T1 plus T1 dash into sin theta is equal to Rn. This if you are resolve all forces vertically. If we resolve all the forces tangentially that is horizontally summation of all horizontal forces equal to 0 if you do then left hand side forces if you assume as a uh, negative and right hand side forces if you assume as a positive then we will get minus T1 cos theta minus mu into Rn and on right hand side one force is there T1 dash cos theta and if you rearrange all this term you will get T1 minus T1 dash into cos theta is equal to mu into Rn. This we have done just we have resolved all the forces T1, T1 dash horizontally and vertically and we have make the addition of these forces horizontally and vertically. Next taking the ratio or dividing the equation second by first you have got t1 minus t1 dash cos theta upon t1 plus t t1 dash into sin theta is equal to mu into rn divided by rn so cancel out the terms and rearranging the terms you will get t1 minus t1 dash is equal to mu into sin theta upon cos theta you can put here as a tan theta into t1 plus t1 dash again multiply by mu tan theta inside the bracket to t1 plus t1 dash and rearrange the terms you will get again t1 upon t1 dash is equal to 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta then then this ratio you have got as a t1 upon t1 dash that is nothing but a tension on the first block and tension on the first and second block isn't it that t1 dash tension will be also acted on the second block also isn't it therefore similar kind of ratio between the for the second block that is t1 dash and t2 dash can be found same kind of ratio for third block that is t2 dash and t3 dash tensions on both the side can be found similarly for n number of blocks we can find this kind of ratio that is tn minus 1 upon t2 because last tension is t2 this ratio you will get same that is 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta. This is for the whole band and block break. We have got a one ratio for these tension and slack sides that is T1 dash upon T2 dash is equal to Tn minus 1 upon T2 is equal to 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta. Now, but we want T1 upon T2 ratio. How we can find that T1 upon T2 ratio? We know that T1 upon T1 dash 
is equal to t1 dash upon t2 dash is equal to t3 dash upon t4 dash sorry is equal to tn minus 1 upon t2 so if you multiply all these ratios then you will get t1 upon t2 therefore t1 upon t2 is equal to multiplication of all these ratios is equal to 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta raised to how many times we have multiplied this multiplication that is equal to number of blocks therefore raised to n we can write therefore we have got one equation t1 upon t2 is equal to 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta raised to n and with this ratio and our previous formula for breaking torque tb is equal to t1 minus t2 into re we can find the breaking torque once you find the t1 and t2 forces on the tight slide and slack side you can find out the tv if the thickness of that band is not given that is t is not given in problem in that case re that is equivalent or effective radius you can write exactly equal to r that is radius of the wheel therefore that equation for breaking torque tb is equal to t1 minus t2 into r also you can write so this is a small derivation for finding the tv that is breaking torque in case of band and block break where you have to remember the two equations that is t1 upon t2 is equal to 1 plus mu tan theta upon 1 minus mu tan theta raised to n and another equation for breaking torque tb is equal to t1 minus t2 into re where re is equal to r plus t by 2 so this is regarding band and block break in internal expanding shoe brakes s1 and s2 two shoes are used and these are used to press against the rotating drum with the help of camping drum and that rotation may stop so in an internal expanding brake consists of two shoes s1 and s2 as shown in the central figure the outer surface of the shoes are lined with the some friction material to increase the coefficient of friction and to prevent the wearing away of the metal each shoe is pivoted at one of the end or uh, fixed fulcrum points o1 and o2 as shown in the figure and made up and made to contact with the cam at the other end that contact may be of the piston and cylinder or cam in this figure you can observe central figure you can observe a cam and on the left side diagram you can observe a central wheel or cylinder which can be actuated by the fluid media that cam or cylinder arrangement just has to used to make sure that the pressing of the shoes towards the back drum now when the cam is rotated the shoes are pushed outward against the rim or drum and the friction between these two shoes and drum produces the breaking torque and hence this reduces the speed of the drum or drum can be stopped the shoes are normally held in the position by the springs as shown in the figure these springs are acting as a retaining springs whenever you are whenever you are removing the force on the cam or piston then these two shoes s1 and s2 are making to its original position with the help of this retaining spring the drum encloses entire mechanism to keep away from the dust and moisture this type of brakes are commonly used in a motor cars and light light duty vehicles here it may be observed that whenever the rotor is rotating or wheel is rotating in anti clockwise direction the left hand shoe is known as a leading shoe or primary shoe while the right hand shoe is known as a trailing shoe because whenever the wheel is rotating in anti clockwise direction first the leading or primary shoe is making the contact with the rotating drum and then the trailing or sort of wear will be occurred for the leading shoe than the trailing shoe now next this type of brakes are commonly used in motor cars and light trucks that we have already discussed in uh, below animation you can observe that whenever a operator presses a brake then that cylinder will get actuated and these two brake linings are or brake shoes are actuated and pressed against a rotating drum so that brake will be applied so instead of cam also you can use here as a piston and cylinder arrangement to stop the fill so thanks for watching students if you have any query uh, write in the comment box thanks for watching stay tuned with this